Welcome everyone. Today we'll be sharing our work with you in a presentation style. To ask questions throughout this presentation, please use the Q&A function and we will compile all questions to answer at the end. We'd also like to let you know that this session is automatically recorded. Welcome to Women with Disabilities Australia's session on our site, a website by and for women with disability. We'd like to begin by wishing you all a very happy International Women's Day. My name is Zoe Haustein. My pronouns are she, her, and I am the project director overseeing the original Our Site website and the expansion of our work through the Our Site 2.0 project. I have brown shoulder length curly hair and white skin with blue eyes, and I'm wearing a pink jumper today. I'm sitting at a desk with a blurred background. I acknowledge that I'm coming to you from the land of the Moiwinina people in southern Lutruwita, Tasmania, Australia, and I also identify as the daughter of parents with disabilities. I'm joined by my colleague, Tanya. Hi, my name is Tanya Sinclair. My pronouns are she, her, and I am our site's gender-based violence practice manager. I have shoulder length brown curly hair and brown eyes and it is currently tied back in a ponytail. I'm wearing a navy blue top with my hair pulled back. I'm coming with you, coming to you from the land of the Wujuk people of the Noongar Nation. I'm sitting at a desk with a blurred background. I identify as a woman with a disability. We are also joined by our colleague Kat. Hi. I'm Kat Standley. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the content development officer. I'm coming to you from the land of the Bonarong people of the Kulin Nation. I'm a woman of colour. I have long brown and blonde hair and wearing green framed glasses and a black top. I am sitting at a desk with a blurred background. I have lived experience of disability. On behalf of women, women with Disabilities Australia, we acknowledge the land on which we meet with you today is the land of the First Nations people of Australia with a continued rich culture. I acknowledge that this land is stolen land and has never been ceded. We express our gratitude to the First Nations people for their continued care of this land and we also acknowledge all First Nations people in the audience today. We celebrate the value of the unique personalities, strengths, interests and abilities of every audience member joining us. Each individual adds to our vibrant and diverse community. We also acknowledge um, and thank the captioners and international sign language interpreters joining us today. We make special note to you all that the language we're using throughout this presentation is an Australian English perspective. The work we're doing with the Our Site website is such a vital work. For those of you in New York, I hope that you have really enjoyed the CSW forum so far. And as you end your day, we know that you're either at the end of a long day or you might be at the end of multiple long days at the forum already. And some of you might really be feeling quite energetic or some of you might have a much lower capacity. So we're going to make this session as interactive as is possible. We really value your time and we intend to be engaging and hopefully share something that's really helpful for you and your work. There'll be moments where we will invite you to think quietly about some things and towards the end of the presentation, there'll be time for some questions. The Outsight team is fairly new, uh, reforming at the beginning of this year. So if you have any questions, we can't get to today, please feel free to email us. We love to learn and capacity exchange. And today we have plenty of time together. During this presentation, Tanya, Kat and I will be sharing our work with you through a series of slides that will present for about uh, 25, 30 minutes, and then we'll have some time for questions and answers at the end. We'll take you on a journey through our site's development and its future and um, where we'll be sharing some tips and questions to ask yourself and or your organisation when thinking about accessibility and resource creation. We are always listening, but right now we would like to present to you.
This slide shows the Women with Disabilities Australia logo and some key points I'd like to take you through. Officially established in 1995, Women with Disabilities Australia, pronounced WIDA, is an award-winning Australian Disabled Persons Organisation, or a DPO, and a National Women's Alliance for Women, Girls, Feminine Identifying and Non-Binary People with Disabilities in Australia. Feminine identifying is a term that refers to gender identity or expression that describes someone with a gender that is or leans towards feminine. Some feminine identifying people also identify as women, while many don't. Non-binary is an umbrella term for someone who does not identify as exclusively male or female. Identities that are outside the gender binary. Someone who is non-binary may feel like a mix of genders or like they have no gender at all. We use the term women and girls with disabilities on the understanding that this is, an inclusive, this is inclusive of women, girls, feminine identifying and non-binary people with disabilities in Australia. WIDA represents more than 2 million individuals in Australia. We have affiliate organisations and networks in most states and territories of Australia, and we are internationally recognised. All of our work is grounded in a human rights based framework that links gender and disability issues to civil, political, economic, social and cultural rights, applying an intersectional feminist lens. To promote the rights of women and girls with disabilities, we take part in a range of systems advocacy activities. Our work seeks to support and empower individuals, whilst also creating a greater awareness amongst governments and other other the relevant institutions about their obligations to do so. This slide shows three icons of women being engaged in different ways that I'll now tell, take you through. Our site is a website created because women and gender diverse people living with disabilities asked for it. We are very proud to have just marked our site's three year anniversary with the website being launched on the 8th of March, 2020. The website houses information and resources to support women and girls with disability to learn about and stand up for their rights. It is a website by and for women and girls with disability. Our site was an Australian wide two year project led by Women with Disabilities Australia. The project delivered on a vision that had been conceived by the WIDA community many years earlier for an accessible website that provided information about the rights of women and girls with disability in four key areas, leadership and participation, decision-making and agency, sexuality and reproductive health and safety from violence. The website is grounded in the diverse experiences of women and girls with disability. And we continue to maintain the website, updating it as needed, and always looking for opportunities to keep it relevant and engaging. We would normally aim to be more engaging when sharing our, our work as interaction is really important to us. And so we will be available at the end of this presentation for some questions. But instead of using the chat function for questions and answers at this point, we would really like to invite you to take a moment to think about what accessibility means to you um, and consider what words or concepts come to mind when you think about accessibility in your own personal life and also out in the community. When developing the OurSite website, we looked at accessibility in terms of accessible fonts, colour contrast, different translation of languages, providing image descriptions in all our resources, providing captioned videos. We optimised the website for various devices. We created easy read versions of resources and communications. We're also working to a double A plus accessibility rating. Um, when we take um, some time to, when you take some time to look through the Our Site website, you may have suggestions or feedback for us, which we would love to hear. And you can email us at our site, one word, at www.dwda.org.au. And you might have some fun spotting the ways in which we've made this presentation accessible as well. 
Please join us now in watching a short clip from our Executive Director, Carolyn Framada, introducing our site. Welcome. My name is Carolyn and I'm the CEO of Women with Disabilities Australia. I'm really proud to introduce you to a new website we have developed called Our Site. The Our Site website has been created by women and girls with disability for women and girls with disability. It provides information, stories, videos and other resources on five main topics related to the rights of women with disability. These topics have been prioritised by women with disability themselves. They are your rights. This section provides information on the rights of women and girls with disability, including United Nations conventions and Australian laws. Lead and take part. This section provides information about being a leader and taking part in every aspect of your community. Life choices. This section provides information that supports your right to make your own choices and decisions in everyday life. Sex and your body. This section provides information about your right to express your gender and sexuality, to have relationships and to raise a family. Safety from violence. This section provides information on your right to be free from any form of violence. Within each of these sections, there are lots of different pages. Once you go into one of these pages, you will find lots of information, as well as videos, images and links. At the bottom of every page, you will find a collection of important resources that you can view and also download. You will also find a section called Where To Next, which has links to other websites related to the topic that you might like to explore. Almost every page on our site has a summary provided in Easy Read. Easy Read uses simple and easy to understand language and images. Our site also features a real stories section, which showcases the stories of women with disability from across Australia. These include poems, audio, written stories, and a series of videos. If you need to stop using our site quickly and you don't want someone to see you using it, you can click on the red exit button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen at any time. This will quickly take you to the Google homepage. We would love to hear what you think about our site and how you think we can make it even better. You can do this by clicking on the contribute link and filling out the form. You can also tell us if you would like to submit your own story to the real stories section. Our site also has a Facebook group linked to the Women with Disabilities Australia Facebook page. So make sure you check it out and get involved. Thank you for visiting. I hope you find what you are looking for and enjoy exploring our site. This next slide shows a photograph of the original our site committee members. Overall, we engaged over 110 additional women with disabilities using a co-design approach where we involved women with disability in every stage of the project. Women with disability were involved in governance committees, advisory panels, workshops, and also user testing of the website. Some messages from the original OurSight co-designers. Women and girls with a disability joined hearts and minds to create our site with their own personal experiences, stories, and expertise. Women with disability own our site and no one can take this from us. Our site can be our voice. This slide has the new landing page for the Real Stories webpage on our site. Alongside a range of resources, our site also houses stories contributed by women with disabilities. Over the past three years, nearly 100 stories have been shared in a range of mediums including poems, written stories, audio, interviews, short style documentary clip, short documentary style clips and art forms. They fall into the categories, your rights, lead and take part, life choices, sexing your body and safety and violence. We have built a new real stories page 
which we launched on our three year anniversary. You might like to check it out. This slide shows the storytelling workshop image, which we used for social media. To celebrate our site's three year anniversary, we look back at the stories that have been shared on our site. We have been exploring innovative ways to engage women and gender diverse people with disability to share their story. In April, we are hosting a storytelling workshop to launch our Community of Storytellers campaign, where we aim to build the skills and confidence of women and gender diverse people with disabilities so that they may share their stories in a way that makes them feel comfortable and valued. The workshop will help contributors get to know the different ways that they can tell a story, such as through song, video, art, or writing. This slide shows the original Our Site logo, the arrow leading to the new Our Site 2.0 onwards logo. We've been fortunate enough now to now be able to expand Our Site. In 2022, we received funding to expand our site from the National Government Department of Social Services. The focus of expansion is to reduce the rate of gender-based violence against women with disabilities. The term gender-based violence is used to encapsulate the many forms of violence women with disabilities face and goes beyond family and domestic violence. The aim is to fill in some of the gaps of knowledge for both women and women with disabilities, as well as professionals who may not have previously had much experience with disability before. We are engaging in co-design with women with disabilities, as well as professionals from the non-disability specific services. Most of the next slides can have summary points rather than pictures. Journey so far. We have recruited a diverse steering committee of nine members from across Australia, varying in ages, backgrounds and disabilities. This group meets virtually on a regular basis to provide feedback on what we have done and where we are heading, where we should be heading. We have recently completed an engagement session with the steering committee asking what topics they would like to see on the new website. The next major stage is the in-person workshops with women and gender diverse people with disabilities, as well as service providers who do not work in the disability sector. We run two sets of workshops. The first focuses on what users want. By this, we mean what content they want covered, as well as about accessibility. We then come back later for user testing, allowing time to adjust and to make changes to the website. We are also planning on hosting online workshops and a range of surveys for those who are unable to attend in-person workshops. For example, for people who are housebound, working, caring for others who live too far away from an in-person workshop or who are concerned about the impacts of COVID. We'll be creating content which will be reviewed by an expert panel. This website expansion project is led by women with disabilities and their lived experiences. We're also hoping to start bridging the gap between women with disabilities and professionals who do not work in, who are not working in the disability sector specifically. We're asking them, what information do you need to help you to support our community? Professionals don't know everything, so let's stop assuming we know what they need to learn and start applying co-design principles. Over the course of this expansion project, we are we have the capacity and commitment to change our project plan based on co-design. We have allowed time to change based on feedback. Consider how could you build capacity to change into your project and timeframes? This slide shows four icons and a short description, which I'll take you through now. Our commitment to co-design at WIDA incorporates the following a genuine non-tokenistic approach to involving women and girls with disability that results in a shared ownership of activities that the project delivers. A feeling of being valued and respected for contributions to the co-design process, 
a commitment in trying to ensure that women and girls are supported to participate and that materials are available, accessible and appropriate for them. A shared understanding of what co-design means based on an honest and transparent dialogue and partnership. We are committed to ensuring that participants' contributions influence the activities and programs that the OurSite 2.0 project delivers. This rests on the commitment of staff members to be accountable to women and girls with disabilities. We value the contributions of women and girls with disabilities by reimbursing them for their involvement and expertise. If you are a smaller organisation, for example, or a group um, and financial remuneration is not an option, uh, what are some of the ways that you could exchange skills, knowledge and ideas? Can you provide opportunities like training or mentoring, for example? By being inclusive in all the intersectional experiences of women and girls with disabilities, our site aims to be a place that provides women and girls with disability a place to find relevant and useful information as well as a community. Co-design principles are essential to creating resources that work for the user. Co-design allows for feedback, development, learning and improvement. Co-design can give women with disabilities a sense of ownership when done meaningfully. Ownership leads to investment into your community. For example, spreading the word about the site, offering contributions to keep it current, letting you know when the site is broken, for example, with broken links, as well as outdated information. Co-design can eliminate unpopular or unuseful ideas or concepts early in the development stage. It clarifies identity and ideals. For project staff, remember this is not about you. Be flexible and be ready to listen and learn. It makes way for fresh ideas and information that is genuinely useful to your target group, not a guess about what they believe to be useful. Have a commitment to co-design in your terms of reference. And the terms of reference is a guiding document for, which, for what a project is aiming to do. Respect and celebrate other organisations that are using co-design to deliver their projects or initiatives and services. We can learn from each other. At Women with Disabilities Australia, we believe the people using the service should be the ones making designing the service. Co-design allows for feedback, improvement, feedback, improvement, and so on and so on. We are proactive in our recruitment of diversity in all our project committees and panels, and we aim to strike a balance between frequency, remaining also conscious of the intensity of any engagement and are mindful of our community and their capacity throughout the project. We ensure all meeting materials are accessible and meet the accessibility needs of the group individuals. We're aware of ableist language in co-design. For example, women with disabilities are not vulnerable. This is a social construct of discrimination and oppression and should not be reinforced. Some co-design questions you could ask. Is the online design software you are using accessible? This is, could be as simple as the website you are using. What can you do to honor exchanges? Are you able to pay those you co-design with? Are you able to offer training in exchange? People are sharing their stories and experiences with you. It's their intellectual capital. They're also providing you with their time. Are you working together on content development? Have you created enough time to develop content with those you are co-designing with? Don't assume you know how women with disabilities use technology, for example. Rather try to understand the barriers that they may be experiencing and try to reduce those barriers. Where where can you slow things down and allow people to be meaningfully engaged? People need time to contribute and you are, are you building in enough time in, in between phases of the project? Work with your communities and co-design committees to better understand 
how they are working, what they need, how they're using it. Spend time demystifying complex text, tech and general language, as well as acronyms in your co-design groups and committees. You might like to take a moment to answer some of these for yourself. Our site is not just a website, it is a community. We develop resources for our community that our community wants and we are willing to change. We are working directly with women with disabilities. We are working with gender-based violence sector and we are listening to multiple voices and creating multiple stories and resources. We are creating a safe space to challenge what's been and what's being done. There are many great projects in the past, but how can we do better with what we have available to us now? How can we push ourselves further? What's changed and how do we embrace change? We also need to be talking to those professionals outside of the disabled community who work with us. How can we help them to help us? We know things can improve, so let's start talking to each other and embrace co-design with professionals as well. We are co-creating content with all members of the community, empowering women with disabilities to live their best lives. We hope that you have taken at least one valuable item away from this session to share with others. And please get in touch with us if you have any insights, feedback or questions about how you might meaningfully co-design a space people can call their own. To find out more about our site or Women with Disabilities Australia, you can use any of the links provided on this slide. You can use the link to the report written about our site, which might be a good starting point if you wanna develop a similar resource using co-design. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Uh, for those of you who are aware of the opening of the Commission on the Status of Women Forum by the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, um, you will have, but you, he, I mean, he shared with you, uh, you might remember that his urgent um, action to equalize power in relation to gender equality was in three ways. One was to increase education, two was to promote women's leadership, and three was to create safe digital environments for women, for women and girls. And these um, three commitments uh, really speak to the work that we're doing at our site and also all the work that we do uh, in Women with Disabilities Australia. Um, we really wish you uh, the best over the course of the uh, the rest of the forum. And uh, again, if you have any questions or feedback or insights that you'd like to share with us, uh, we would love to continue the conversation. Uh, you can email us at our site at www.da.org.au um, and we would love to continue the conversation with you. Thank you.